Morning. Big, big day today. Me and my brother are going to settle an old score. Now you may remember my brother, he's done a few videos on my channel, pops up now and again. If you're not sure who he is, just turn your phone 90 degrees because the bloke's always filming in portrait. But just turn your phone, landscape, give you the viewers a better experience. But hey, portrait is way to go, old school classic. But anyway, there's a recent stag do trip we went on where there was a go kind event that took place, and there's still, still to this day, arguments over what actually happened. Some people claim that they got us from a lap down back to second position in their stint. Yeah, brilliant, well done. Conveniently, this person also forgets who put them on pole in the first place and then who brought it home to the actual check the flag for first position. That'll be yours truly. But these sort of minor details seem to get lost in translation somehow. So we're going to settle the score today. We're going go-karting at St Evil's track. And as the Lion games have already started, he's already got me up at a crack of dawn. He knows I'm not a morning person, he knows I'm a night owl, so he's trying to take advantage of that. He's woke me up so early, I haven't even had time to have my morning clear out. So obviously I'm weighing a bit more than I usually would. But you know, I'm not going to let these things bother me. The track times, the sector times, the tyre degradation, the final podium positions, they will be the true uh, test and true result of who is the supreme driver within this family. And also, he's, he's sort of forgetting that this is my channel and I edit all the videos. <coughs> so I get the feeling that no matter what happens today, no matter what the outcome is, I might come out smelling of roses here. But either way, we're going to treat it with fair, respectful driving. And we're going to see just who is the go kart king of the Smith Dynasty. Let's do this, right? We're going to catch you on the way there. Because driving and talking and filming is not as easy as you might think. Nearly taking out a couple of cyclists. Either way, I'll see you at the track. It's on and popping. I've turned up in my Volkswagen Golf and we got my polo. They don't know what they're in for. Here we go, people. We have go kart life. We're here at the world famous St. Evil go kart track here in Cornwall. Uh, you can forget all your, your other Grand Prix circuits like your Silver Thrones, uh, your Fonzas, your Scars, your Bazookas. Because this is the place where it really counts. This is where all the uh, pros come to hone their skills. This is where they make their name. So obviously this is why me and my brother are here. Uh, I've previously mentioned maybe a bit of a uh, history between us on this one. And we're going to settle the score today. Now obviously me and my brother, we come from a... Our, our bloodline is racing. You know, our nan, Ellie Smith, she's the only woman to uh, hit 85 miles an hour going down the A10 in third gear with a 900cc uh, Nissan Micra. So it's in our blood, really. You know, we know this game inside out. Now, uh, I didn't I didn't qualify today because, um, well, to be honest, I wanted to give everyone else a bit of a chance and uh, there's an early start today and I'm hanging out my ass a little bit, right? So don't worry about it. I'm letting everybody else done the qualifying, so I should be starting. Oh, hang on, hang on, who's this? If it is an old uh, Maldonado over here, looking for looking forward to this. Yeah, nice. No, gonna be good. Yeah, <laughs> confident. Could be easy, nice, easy victory. Lights to flag situation for me. Yeah, standard. Oh, nice. Yeah. Standard four four two. Four. <laughs> what are we looking at here? High degradation. Yeah, yeah. A bit slippery in places. Is it? Yeah, but um, as long as you like a bit of oversteer. Love a bit of oversteer and a bit of late braking. Of course, last and late braking. I like week. my women. <laughs> Fair enough. Well, the obviously we've got Cornwall, uh, got the Cornish Sea Breeze mm. to contend yeah, with. Also, yeah. So uh, turn seven and seven and twelve. That's uh, wind against. So you know, should be all good. Excellent stuff. Oh, that'll be your race engineer. <laughs> yeah, big Phil. <laughs> 
So, oh, big Phil's on the phone, just going over some last, last minor details with him. We're getting called to our session. Sorry? We're getting called to oh, our session. Fucking hell! I haven't <laughs> finished. All right, I might finish this in a minute. we got to go now, because I haven't done all my jokes. Right. Fuck! Man, you're new here. I'm a legend. 1664 this time. Oh, sorry. You join me back at uh, the hospitality suite in Park Ferme. I've just been given the once over by the medic. You know, I'm, I'm, I'm alright, it's fine. All will kind of uh, become apparent in a minute. But yeah, I'm fine. Don't worry about it. Just wanted to apologise for the, uh, the rather rushed introduction to that video. They obviously start their Grand Prix a lot. Uh, earlier in the day down here in Cornwall um, you don't often see that do you, in real Formula 1 people having to wait because the drivers aren't in their car what's the one what's that one in America the, the, the cars can only turn left Escobar if you don't see Escobar drivers still in the OK Corral when it's time for lights out do you anyway I'll know for next time it's not a problem now um, <coughs> we finished the racing and uh, I must say I'm very very disappointed uh, not in my own performance but in the conduct of my uh, brother to be honest it's disgusting behaviour so let me just run you through session one which is where it all kicked off so the fastest lap times got them here I'll try and put them on the screen I did take a picture so uh, fastest lap time for me in session one was 58.4 seconds fastest lap time for my brother was 57.3 now, on paper, that's 1.1 seconds faster than me. Numbers don't lie, do you know what I mean? But there are two contributing factors to this. The first one was my pit stop, which uh, probably boggles up by the team. I know in this one they say, oh, it's a no blame culture, and no, it's a team effort. Well, no, it's not in this case. They properly mucked it up. They stuck me on the soft tyre. But even Ray Charles could see it was a medium circuit. Right? We spoke about it in the introduction. We were talking about the sand on the track, higher degradation. Hello? Right? What did they do? Yeah, they stick me on the soft side. My tyres were completely dead by the end of the first stint. And then, <sighs> lap six. He's not going to appreciate me bringing this up, but you know, I think this is history now. It happened. Lap six, turn three. I'm in control. I'm cruising. I've got a clear road in track in front of me. Just like that, all of a sudden, I'm facing the wrong way. How am I facing the wrong way? Who's going <laughs> on the way past? My brother. Huh? Look at that. He thinks he's old Bill. He's pit maneuvered me, so I had to wait for the whole. all the other drivers to pass me before I could whip it around and then continue the race. But then by then, there was only like three laps left, so what do you want me to do with that? I'm not my only human after all. Don't put the blame on me. There's no way I was going to recover from that. Disgusting behaviour. I, you know, I might let him have his say on that, but then again, my channel, my rules, I probably won't. To be fair, so you're gonna have to take my word for it. <laughs>
session two. Fastest lap time, oh, well, this, this looks good. Fastest lap time for myself at 56.7. Massive improvement. That's the second and a half I've gained. See what happens when you don't get taken out by your brother. And then his fastest lap time was a 57.1. What's he doing? Huh? You take the wrong turn in. And that was even with my big crash, so not. <laughs> I don't. I don't. It might seem like I've had two crashes in two sessions. It might, you know, you might want to see what's the common denominator here, but no, no, no. So on the first, well, I can't remember what lap it was exactly. It might have been about five or something like that. But on the first turn, some kids just spun in front of me, you know, yellow flags and all that. I slowed right down, as you should. You know what I mean? I don't want to put anybody's lives in danger, unlike some other people we could mention. So I've slowed down, I've come around the corner, and this is honestly, is just literally drove into the side of me. I don't know what he was thinking. I was on two wheels at one point, he proper smashed into me. I was on two wheels at one point, I thought I was going over. I wasn't, I didn't, because you know me, a little pro, you know, you feather the throttle, and you, you adjust the steering accordingly, and then before you know it, I was back down on all four tyres, and boom, I was off again. Although, I have cracked a few ribs, but you know, I'm not going to moan about that, I'm not going to make excuses for that sort of thing. So that was a strong, solid performance from me in session two. I like you do better than a smithy. Session three, my fastest lap was a 57.6. My brother's fastest lap was a 57.5. Right, that's a 0 0.1 difference between us of a second. You might think, well, that means he's faster. Yeah, that, that, that does mean he's faster on paper, right? But you got a, there's a, another reason for that because I didn't have the greatest session three either. My drinks bottle got a bit mucked up. I was just saying in there. I don't know if you caught me. I've got a new race engineer, he's called Farquhar, right? I used to have Ernie, Ernie knew exactly what I wanted, and when I wanted it, and how I wanted it, right? Farquhar hasn't got a clue, he's all into this sports science and all this shit, like treating your body like a temple. No, he's put water in my drinks bottle, right? No, that's not how I roll, right? On a cold, wet race, I need Vossi in my drinks bottle, everybody knows that, and then if it's a nice, clear, sunny day like today, it's 1664 all day, every day. It's quite simple, two options. Water. Listen to it. So not only that, right? But there's a few more other reasons that you have you have to take into consideration when you're racing similar performance uh, carts. And first of all, there's no getting around it. I'm heavier than he is. So obviously, that's more weight. That means you know, don't going to go slower. It's quite simple. It's just mathematics, isn't it? And second of all. I'm taller than he is, like, I'm, you know what I mean, I'm a good six foot six myself, he's walking around, he's five foot eight, right, plus, on top, I did notice that he got himself a medium sized helmet, obviously I have to wear a large sized helmet because I've got a bigger brain, so, you come with a taller and a bigger helmet, that's like more surface area sticking out of the cart, more wind resistance, that's going to slow you down, yeah, we all know what friction is, we all know that that's the main issue when you're trying to travel and pass through air is friction so obviously I've created a bit more of that not to mention that in session 3 I was also injured I don't know if I mentioned the uh, crack drifts but yeah that's a factor and also finally not many people saw this to be honest but in the small sector I did get stuck behind a rolling roadblock there were two carts right in front of me just side by side one of them was a red one one of them was a green one, and they just start firing out like uh, green shells, red shells behind them, mega bananas, beyonds. So I thought, what is going on here? Just, all I could hear was, hey, hey, it's me, Luigi, yeah. So I thought, Sunable 
you need to address this you need to uh, screen your clientele before you allow them to race on your track because that was totally unacceptable people like me who do this for a living live and breathe racing shouldn't have to put up with that sort of tomfoolery but anyway you know I'm not bitter or anything like that these are the facts I just like to present them for you so you can all make your own educated decision on who you believe is the fastest driver out of me and my brother I know who he is I'm sure he has his opinions like I say I might give him a chance to justify his actions although there's no way you can justify that it was absolutely bar barbaric what he did to me you could try and take out your brother disgusting just for just to win a race of go time you know, like, take a long hard look at yourself in the mirror anyway I'm going to round it off now. This has been Go Kart Life. If you ever get the chance, then I suggest that you too should have a go go karting. Crazy. Yeah, so as I said, if you're going to end up in any more gravel traps, they're going to think you're a grave digger. <laughs> I know I'm mental. Champione, champione, ole, ole, ole. Oh. oh, there's all that commotion. You all right? You get your hands off me. You're talking to the winner. Get out of here. Ah, this will be over in two seconds. Thanks for the warm hospitality, though. What absolute farce. Please, please, come in, sit down, sit down. Yes, calm down. Oh, do you wanted to? Uh, oh, do you wanted to see me? Little discrepancy. Do you mind? Because I'm a little bit busy, you know. Champagne and all that, you know. Winner and all that. Yeah. So, Mister Mister Smith. Yeah. No, no. It's uh, it's Mister Oliver. Apex Clipper Smith, if you don't mind. Oh, sorry, uh, Mr. Mr. Oliver Apex Clipper Smith. Uh, take a seat and uh, try and calm yourself down, please. No, 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 no cockiness. No, no, no. It's, it's, it's all been blown out of proportion. We're making a mountain out of a uh, snow mill here. A what? You mean a molehill? Yeah, 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 yeah. Tomato, tomato, you know what I mean? You uh, you do understand why we've asked to see you, don't you? Yeah, but firstly, can I just say, was that cavity search out there really necessary by David Seaman? Ah, beggar's belief. But we don't have security outside. Oh, no, no Okay, uh, yeah, might owe, that, might owe that bloke some money then because I ended up getting a bit of a wowsers in the trousers sort of situation. Uh, Talk us through the incident on Tuesday the 7th at St. Evil Casting Circuit. Yeah, no, I could take you through it nice and easy to be fair. Um, firstly, it ruined my holiday, the way that he reacted. Um, I think I'm going to lose my job, but you know, no one seems to care that I'm suffering from uh, PSTDs. But you know, I'll suffer in silence. Yeah, incident comes um, comes down to one major factor really, and that's jealousy. Because uh, while I'm warming up on the laps, I can hear him, all the crowd. Oh, it's that Senna. I thought he died, but. The way that boy's controlling that cart must be Senna, you know. Whilst he he's having to listen to people going, is that Peter Griffin? Yeah, yeah, looks like it. Right sort of body composite for Peter Griffin. Must be Peter Griffin. Can't see bloody feet in these. Yeah, rolling a uh, rolling start, a bit like the mod. Not my favourite way to start, but you know, had to be done. I don't make the rules. Uh, I was chasing, and I hadn't really 
you know, I'm still cantering if we're going to use a horse racing terminology. I'm not even out of third gear here. I'm, I'm not in, you know, full whack just yet. Um, he was slow out of turn three. He's always been slow, though, mentally and physically. Um, so, you know, like a koala bear, I just striked while the iron is hot. Uh, I went up the inside more than halfway alongside, so I am I warrant the respect for room. And what I can say is I was about to receive a disgraceful attack, okay? I was smashed into the barrier. Not just a little tappy tap, smashed into it. I was like a rock in a hard space. That's all I've got to say on that. So it was premeditated, not a racing incident. Look, <laughs> all I'm saying is, in the autumn, the leaves fall off the trees. I rest my case. I mean, he's not wrong, but he's not right at the same time. But I'll tell you what doesn't make sense. Claiming you're six foot eight, like I said, it's just jealousy, smellacy. <laughs> jealousy, smellacy. Like it. So, if we're done here, I'm off to pop this and enjoy the fruits of my labour. Because I'll tell you what was labour. Putting up with him for five days. The least he could have done was, you know, looked in his mirror. Yeah, that's all. Thank you. We'll compare our notes and see who bribes us the most. Okay, thank you. Bye-bye.